What's up guys, Rick from DFS On Demand here with the one and done preview for the WGC Mexico Championships. But before we get to that, let's look back at last week's Genesis Open. And I've got the uh, results for how we did last week. So in our season-long lineup, we rostered Patrick Cantlay, who earned us $100,000. And in our weekly pick'em, uh, we had Rory, who earned us $325,000. So two six-figure caches. We'll, we'll talk about what the rest of the field did in a second. But this puts us squarely, um, both, both lineups within $100,000 of each other, $150,000 of each other, right around the million-dollar mark. Um, basically pretty firmly in the middle of this one-and-done pool. Um, you know, the whiffs last week at Pebble Beach hurt, uh, but we've knocked, we've had quite a few six figure scores already this season, which is something that, um, you know, we could not have said for a while last year. So how did the rest of the field do? Um, unfortunately the answer is pretty good. So here were the most owned golfers of last week. Bubba led the way. Then it was Hideki, DJ, Xander, Justin Thomas, and Rory McIlroy to round out the top six. Those were the only guys who got over 200 picks a piece. Um, it was pretty, uh, I mean, I mean, I, I think last week, the week before, let me see. Yeah, Pebble Beach was pretty extreme where Jason Day was the most owned golfer. Um, and he was twice as many as, as the next guy. Hideki at the Waste Management, same thing. Um, so... Yes, Bubba was the most owned golfer of last week, but from one to six, it was only a difference of, you know, 140 uh, owners. So pretty even distribution at the top there. And then here's the final leaderboard for the Genesis. And unfortunately, the, the guys that I've marked here were the most popular guys and our um, our pick. So Justin Thomas, one of the most popular players, finishes second. Rory, luckily, is, is the one that we had, finishes T4. And then Hideki and DJ, both T9. Cantlay was another one of our picks, T15, which is the same thing that Bubba and Xander finished at. So uh, essentially a lot of guys getting six-figure scores last week, the, you know, a, a large chunk of the field. This is definitely the first WGC event that we've used in this model. And what I love with this model is it not only takes into account um, the strength of the field, but it also takes into account the prize pool and the average payouts. So what you'll notice is all of these expected values, all of these expected payouts are significantly higher than we have seen in other weeks. And even the smallest payouts, Andrew Putnam, Abraham Answer, Ches Revy, guys that are projected down at the bottom of this uh, pool are still earning $70,000. And that's the way that the WGC is constructed because it's a no-cut event. Everyone's getting paid as long as you finish and the, and the prize pool is fairly significant. So really cool to see the model make those types of adjustments um, as it's designed to do. Um, so what do we see here? So we see that Tiger again leads the way here. And, and I'll, t I'll tell you what, this is not unique to Tiger Woods in general. He, is, he gets overvalued um, in the betting market, he gets overvalued in the DFS market and he really gets overvalued in my model. I'm not afraid to say that. Um, we might have to do some adjustments here, but he is the highest expected value for $157,000 with Rory DJ and Justin Thomas coming in right behind at 141, 140 and 140. Um, a big drop like that in the model is pretty significant. And the reason that you're seeing it from Tiger is obviously because he's Tiger Woods. So his average payout over his career has been awesome. Um, he doesn't play a lot of events. So again, he wins a lot, doesn't play a lot of events. His average is up there. And the guy owns 18 WGC titles. Uh, the next closest is DJ with five. So of course the model is going to spit out this unbelievable number for Tiger as it probably should, but use your better judgment when it comes to rostering some of these guys. All right, so where are we going to go? And if you, if you want the full breakdown, I did the full DFS breakdown um, earlier, in the, earlier in the week. Uh, here's just a, a quick, quick look at the cheat sheet here. Uh, JT, you know... Uh, Excellent play. DJ, excellent play. They're both hot. They both have great course history. 
you have a, a plethora of riches here. But where I'm going to go with my weekly pick um, is is Bryson. And and the reason that I'm doing that, so so I'll also flip over to the strokes gained tool here. And this is um, strokes gained by salary. So obviously we don't care about salary and one and dones, but um, basically his his strokes gained total this year compared to the field has been excellent. Um, additionally, in a four round event where there's going to be no cut, um, I want birdie makers, right? Guys that can continue to climb back into this event. Um, like we saw DJ kind of do G DJ didn't have his best stuff last week, but ends up finishing, um, you know, in what T nine or whatever it ends up being just because he's able to always stay in it. Uh, Bryson has a 30% birdie or better rate. He grinds. Um, this is a course that not many people have played. This is only the third year. Um, it's at high altitude. What I'm getting at is there's just a lot of different factors in play this week. And when it comes to guys who, um, handle factors and try to quantify them and try to figure out how best to approach them. There's nobody better than Bryson, right? So if it's, if, if distances are 12% increase this year or this week off the tee and off the fairway and guys are just hitting it further. Um, I trust Bryson to make the necessary adjustments to be able to go come out on top of this and doesn't help or doesn't hurt that he's won what four times in the last couple months. So um, that's where we're going to go there. Outside of that, I talked a lot about Xander in um, in the DFS video. I think that he has basically just been, he has had one bad round in each of the last few weeks that has really kind of sunk him, but he's still posting top tens like crazy. Um, I, I love Hideki in this spot. I, I think Leishman is fine in this spot. Um, if you want to go to the top and run out, DJ or J, JT, I think that's fine. If you want to spend down or, or save some guys for later, you could get away with Leishman or Kucher. Or if you're really in a deep pool, for whatever reason, maybe you're picking two a week, you know, um, Cam Smith, Terrell Hatton, uh, those guys I think are certainly good values as well. But I'm going to continue the approach of just um, pounding uh, some top tier guys at the top of this. And uh, I'm, I'm rolling Bryson out in the weekly. And then in the season long, I was very, very pleasantly surprised to see that we have Xander queued up for this spot. Um, already owns two WGC titles. Is that right? I believe um, he's, he's shown a real liking to these no cut events. And he has been so, you know, just one bad round away from being in significant content contention Um Every week, I, I think the stat that I mentioned is basically Xander's uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Or actually, I shouldn't say that. His his second round, third round, and fourth round last week were better than JB Holmes' second round, third round, and fourth round in terms of strokes gained total, or so strokes gained. Um, better than the eventual champion. It was just the one. It was the opening round that Xander was like four over, and JB went nuts. That really made the difference. So he's playing well enough to compete week in and week out. Obviously, I was pretty thrilled to see that I already had him penciled in. So uh, Bryson in our weekly lineup, Xander in our season long. Where are you guys going? It's a big event. You want to get out and get a stud in there. So are you rostering a stud, or are you going to come down to the middle tier with me? Let me know. Tweet me. It's at DFS on demand or leave a comment below. I'll talk to you guys soon. Good luck.